Hello and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. So today's video is very short and it's regarding B, B and C bacteria. What is the significance or importance of these B, B and C bacteria? So B, B and C stands for viable but non-culturable bacteria. Okay, so we are going to study their significance today. So first of all, a B, B and C state is a very unique survival strategy of many bacteria in environment. Uh, in response to adverse environmental conditions okay so it is known that uh, some bacteria they can enter to vbnc state and when favorable conditions are uh, present or they get back to their favorable conditions which are required for their growth they can get back to their normal state okay so vbnc bacteria they cannot be cultured in our or on our routine microbiology media that's the very important problem okay we cannot culture them on our routine microbiology media because the requirements for each and every vbnc state bacteria differs okay you cannot mimic uh, the environmental conditions or say the uh, salt concentration requirement or the requirement of the acid or any other factor from their environment from where you have got your sample you cannot mimic exactly what that particular bacteria needs and that's the reason you cannot culture them on our routine microbiology media okay so it doesn't mean that you cannot culture them so they are not viable actually they are viable and even they retain their virulence okay just the problem is that we cannot culture them and thus we cannot study them okay thoroughly so mostly uh, molecular techniques are used to uh, study these uh, VBNC bacteria to know their presence and to detect their presence and see how they differ from a normal uh, bacterial cell. Okay, same species or same genus. Uh, you take uh, example of say Vibrio cholerae, one which is in uh, VBNC state and a one which is in normal pathogenic state. You can compare. What is the difference? Why that particular bacteria got uh, or it entered into a VBNC state? Okay, so mostly molecular techniques are used and not our uh, routine lab, uh, lab techniques are uh, useful here. So already a theoretical video is uploaded on my channel, which is in two parts. Okay, so viable but uh, non-culturable bacteria. I have explained everything which are also known as unculturable bacteria. So the concept of why to study them, uh, what is a VBNC state, then their characteristics, strategy for culturing um, the uncultured bacteria, and are they pathogenic or not, all those concepts are uh, explained there in those two videos. So you can watch my other two videos, and then you can watch the significance of VBNC state bacteria, this video, okay? So let's move towards the importance or significance so the VBNC state is actually advantageous to bacteria. Why? Because as uh, they face, say, any particular environmental stress condition, they have a unique survival strategy through which they can survive that particular stress condition. Even they can get resistance to stress conditions like high acidity, alkalinity, presence of antibiotics, or say low nutrient availability. Okay, so these are the conditions uh, where the bacteria can get resistance, it can survive, and it can uh, be viable. Okay, it will not die. So that's the advantage to the bacteria. Now, through our point of view, there are uh, two, three significance in the medical field. Okay, why? Because first of all, I explained one point that is we should know what other microbes are present in environment which we are not able to culture in our uh, microbiology lab. We cannot study them by our regular traditional methods. Okay, so we need to improve our uh, techniques or say a lot of research is to be done to know what all microbes are present. Around 99% of microbes are there which we really, really don't know their presence, their significance, okay, and uh, other information like habitats and all, okay, around one or two percent of microbes are there, which we actually know, and we study them in our uh, 
uh, labs okay so that was the first point then second is in medical fields you can see some pathogens in vbnc state they are able to cause infections okay so few years back this came into uh, observation and the research was done to verify that whether these vbnc state bacteria they can cause infections okay so for example through uh, referring some research articles i got this example okay so vibrio cholerae cells which are in vbnc state they were inoculated in uh, rabbit ligated ileal loop okay and those vbnc state bacteria they showed positive results for virulence virulence factors okay so they stated that yes even in vbnc state these pathogens they acquire or they have their active virulence factors and this can lead to an infection okay then next is about recurrence of infection and that is also possible if the cell enters vbnc state in an infected person for example in mycobacterium tuberculosis infections um, it is clearly proven that vbnc vbnc state cells in the latent phase of the disease are able to retain or in the uh, at least they can regain their virulence potential upon resuscitation okay resuscitation or resuscitation is uh, getting them back or reviving them okay so this was observed in case of mycobacterium tuberculosis that even in a infected person who is we feel that has got cured but the main reason is they are not cured the bacteria they entered vbnc state and later on the infection was again observed okay so that was the re recurrence of infection is also possible so it is because the vbnc state is low metabolic state okay bacteria are alive they are viable but their metabolic rate is very slow or low and it would seem that more likely that the observed virulence is a result of reactivation to the normal function of cell okay so you can misunderstand that the vbnc state bacteria or the pathogen which is in vbnc state has got back reactivated to its normal state okay so that's not reason the reason is even vbnc state bacteria they gain or they have the potential to uh, infect the person as their virulence factors are active then third point is vbnc pathogenic bacteria they are considered a threat to public health and food safety due to their non detectability through conventional food and water testing methods right we cannot culture them on our routine microbiology media so you cannot detect these vbnc state bacteria okay so a number of disease outbreaks have been reported where vbnc bacteria have been implicated as a causative agent okay and then last point that many indicator bacteria and pathogenic bacteria which exist in 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 aquatic habitats they have been shown to have a vbnc state okay so they can enter a vbnc state and then again they can get back to their normal state so water is routinely tested for such indicators and pathogens and if they are not detected or enumerated at a concentration below guidelines then water is deemed to be safe for public consumptions right so therefore we uh, where circumstances Uh, indicate that possible presence of vbnc pathogens the additional molecular methodology needs to be used to reduce the risk of infective disease outbreak okay so in case of vbnc state bacteria molecular methodologies or molecular techniques are very very important to study them okay or to detect their presence also okay so uh, the these points were taken from uh, this particular article and i found it very useful you can also go on internet google it out and read it okay so i hope you uh, got a uh, idea about what is the significance of vbnc state bacteria and why to study them okay so to get your concepts cleared do watch my other two videos on my channel and thank you for watching do like my video share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel and don't forget to follow me on facebook and instagram by the same handle that is microbial concepts till then bye bye and thank you